Hey guys, so uh, this is called Curses and Protections. I need to tell you a few things from the backstory so that you can understand where how this got started and then how it got answered, okay? So on July 10th, I was driving my husband somewhere and you know my thing with the doves where um, the doves that hang around with me are actually from like Arizona and a preserve and that's the only place they live and of course they're all around me all the time and um, God, you know, gives them to me for encouragement and stuff. Well, we were driving and these um, doves were circling me right but there were like 75 of them I've never seen this many in one place like all together and I was like wow that's really interesting so then on um the next day July 11th I was outside and I was like boy it's awfully quiet it's very strange it's like so dead out here and I didn't think much about it we went driving again and there were zero animals out no birds no nothing and I was like this is really odd because in our area they're just kind of always critters somewhere and so then I went to, um, we went on our errands and did everything, came back home and I had this headache and everything. And I was like, okay, went home, not a critter, put out some fresh seeds. Nobody came. And I was like, okay, this reminds me of a prophecy. So, um, I'm going to read to you the quote, uh, two different pieces from 41324. For each event, I will give an urgency and a peace. For each, I will call mine to pray. Within their spirit, they will feel called. Mine will know events are occurring, even without seeing them or being shown by the news, for I will reveal it. And then down later in that same bunch of words, it said, Also, watch the birds, watch the animals. They will be clues to you, for I will draw them to be restless simultaneously, or I will cause them to go into their place of safety simultaneously. I bring order to all those who are watching. You will see and know the times. And that's exactly what I thought when this was happening. I was like, whoa, something's different. Okay, so that day, many of the anointed I know were experiencing physical challenges, spiritual challenges, financial challenges, all these things were kicking into gear. And um, I had this strange, unexplicable feeling that there was some fuzzy, warm, disgusting thing coming toward me. And I just kept praying my boundaries to push it backwards. But I have like a broken body. <laughs> it's not normal. And um, that day, the Schumann was doing a particular frequency that gives me a particular kind of headache. And since I'm a walking barometer and walking, walking electromagnometer or whatever they call that, I have a particular headache when the frequency goes crazy. And I was, I had that headache and I was like, okay, the animals are gone. I got the funky headache. Something's up. So um, it was very challenging. But at the same time, I'm glad that I have this kind of broken body because I can be alerted and pray when things are changing. Now, um, the anointed who I contacted or contacted me, they all had increased health issues, feelings of anger or depression, which they never have. They felt sort of repressed, like something was keeping them back. Um, they were struggling to pray or keep their focus on God or focus on the Bible. They couldn't really process worship music the same. So there was this pattern I was seeing and I was like, I think a spell has been cast, but I can't really confirm that. I don't know who did it or when it happened, but I just felt that like, I was like, I need to look into this. Let's see, you know, how deep this goes. Well, anyway, as anointed, all of us independently, we didn't really have to say it to each other. We were like, wow, life is difficult. Uh, it's a challenge to pray. It's a challenge to worship. It's a challenge to read our Bible. So we did it in obedience anyway, because that's what we do. We don't say, oh, that's harder. Let's back off. We say it's harder. Let's step it up. Let's fight, right? So that is exactly what we did in obedience. Now, on the 13th of July, 2024, a similar thing happened. Um, the animals disappeared. And I was like, whoop, something's up. And... Just after the famous event where a man had an ear injury that I'm not going to talk about, there was a spell cast. And I know that because I've had a couple of incidences now where I've known a spell has been cast at me and it has a certain feeling. And I was like, whoa, there was a spell cast at the time of this viewing of everyone being so committed to watching this. And I knew there was something wrong with it. And then... 
the frequency headache kicked in again. And I was like, okay, something's really connected here. So um, I began to pray right away and that God would clarify for me exactly what is going on so that I could fight better in prayer. And also that no um, addiction to seeing or hearing about this event would be connected to anyone in my family or my realm of influence and that um, whatever this like spongy dark like horrible thing was that was pressing in on me it had been pressing in on the 11th and it was pressing in really hard again on the 13th and I was like get this thing off of me you know and I just wanted it all gone because I needed to just get back to normal life you know so I feel like it's just easier to live right then um, I had decided that I needed to take communion pray over the house anoint the house with oil again I anointed everything electronic just to put any barriers away and there was some to me there was some connection these events were having to do with the false messiah somehow I don't know how and I didn't know how at the time but I just knew something had to be connected so I started praying against people um, taking the bait so um, I can verify because these words came in on the 16th, but I can verify that another spell was cast on the 17th and the 19th. I would recommend that every prime number, you think, huh, they're probably gonna cast a spell. I can verify though on the 17th and 19th, the frequency thing happened again, the animals disappeared again. Now, if you recall, a few days ago, I released um, words that were called Mr. Prime Numbers talking about the Antichrist and his connection to the prime numbers and when they do different spells and whatever. So here are some words from that. Um, Mr. Prime Numbers, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, and 31. These numbers and combinations of them. This is the reason so many negative events occur on these dates. His own aim to worship him with death, fear, darkness, and evil on these days. So do not hesitate. On these days, I would say preemptively, begin to pray the moment you get up. And if you feel anything funky, pray instantly. Don't give the devil a second. Don't give up any territory. Um, now, on the 16th, these are the words that were given to me, like around, I don't know, 3 in the morning or something. And it's called their predatory will. And this is to help us to understand what's going on in the background as well as how to fight them. Um, now, granted, this whole entire thing so far has been only aimed at the anointed. Some of you aren't anointed, and that's okay. You can learn, because we're here, because we're the ones who are going through everything first. We don't get out of this thing easy, okay? Yeah, we get to go earlier and come back and help, but we don't get out easy. We go through every single thing you guys are going to go through, except we go through it alone, isolated. You're going to go through it, everyone at the same time. So at least you'll have to support people around you more than we do. Um, the thing is that we are the examples so that we can help you. So when you go through it, it's much easier than we go through it because we have to go through it blind and then figure it out and then we simplify it for you. So um, this is like real life um, survivor, real life edition, but spiritual version. I mean, that's really what's going on here. We are fighting for our lives and we are fighting for the church and we are fighting to stay on top of this thing. And um, these strategies, even though they may not apply to you specifically right now this second, they will apply to you. So pay attention and um, let's get into it. Okay, 7, 16, 24, um, I don't know, 245 or something in the morning. Their predatory will. When the obvious sometimes everyday people attack why they are filled or influenced by the evil one the words ring out their efforts delivered but you have a boundary of protection if you choose to employ it when you pray a boundary in place around you this infuriates the enemy very few on the other side are indwelled by demons just those with no hope and no positives the ones indwelled are mean from the heart, and in their offenses they grow in bitterness, anger, and hatred. After any confrontation, they store all of this in their heart. This grows over time until the person is like a monster, finally. When you worship, 
you have a boundary. When you pray, you have a boundary. You always have angelic protection, but the extra boundary is larger and more bold, enveloped in holy protection. The more bold your faith and the more bold your protection in the spiritual, the maximum protection is a large dome around you and a holy fire around your physical self. The holy fire makes demons cower. They know it is from me. They know that the person is from me and there is a limit to what they can do. If you see a person in fear or lash out from another one that seems unlikely timing, this is the state of their demon within. A great fear is seen by you, this is talking to me specifically, and only their demons see your bold fire. They lash out seemingly random. Their demons go rogue against the rules of engagement. If you sense a person has a demon, instantly pray for a boundary of protection. Then pray that their demons are bound and angels take them to the pit or for the demons to be bound to that person so they cannot lash out onto another. Listen and I will guide you which way to pray. Many notice the spiritual fight has increased. Each time this is felt, it is a marker that a new round of demons has been released upon the earth through ritual. Each group a little more aggressive until the one filled with Satan rises. Then the world will have reached the maximum number. Julie, me, you noticed the warmth and density, a new spiritual sensation, and you noticed they have a boundary that they cannot cross near you. Hate, addiction, and anger were released in a new measure last week. That's during that 11th and 13th time period. You could feel the shift. These, hate, addiction, and anger, are to move forward the events of man, to rid yourself of these spiritual oppressions that have been released by ritual. Take communion, pray from the soul in intensity for your protection, then with more intensity, pray the power and demons be pushed back like an army lined up advancing. Pray that the angels with you push back the enemy to a larger boundary. Keep the distance and protect by worshiping and praying at all times through the day. This can be silent or bold. Bold works better, but some situations require silence. Be bold. Do not give up an inch of your boundary. The war is spiritual in nature. Most cannot see it, but mine can sense it. It is called war for a reason. Like war, there are many battles. Each one more intense. Each victory builds faith in me. As one of mine, you can dominate each battle. Bring it to my feet. Be bold in prayer. Sometimes the battle takes longer than a day. It is depending on how many forces they employ and how high the rank of those you are fighting. You need not know their rank or name. Just pray and my angels will be set to work. Worship and my angels will be filled with power and simultaneously the enemies will be weakened. Be bold. Worship and pray from the heart. The more heartfelt and sincere, the more effectiveness, fighting and intensity and watch your boundary and protection grow. Those with full faith are like a burning fire which discombobulates the enemy. They know that I am the power within that person. They are not able to touch such a person. Be of full faith. Fight for it. No matter how bold they are, believe in your soul. I will show up for you and I will protect and provide for you. You know it. When the fight gets fierce and your human side is about to give up, stop. Regroup. Request, I renew and restore you. Be still and let me repair you. Pray your heart and then give your troubles to me. Pray for others. Then get back in the fight with full faith. Watch the impossible happen. Watch me move. 
watch your boundary grow. Stay under my wing, no matter how intense the attacks are on every side. Know that I have you. Be still and know that I am God. Behold me in prayer, faith, and worship. Bring all your confidence to me, for it will not return void. I care for my own. There are times you may feel you are alone in the fight. This is evidence of one or two things. When you are tested, it feels like no one is listening. And when your angels fight very intensely on your behalf, it feels like you are being attacked. For as the fight is raging with a larger demon, rogue demons sometimes slip through to attack you. You will see when you are here the unseen fights in your life. You will be astonished. Keep fighting. Never stop. They are many, but you have the winning power on your side. Even when you feel attacked or alone, you are not. Keep moving forward in obedience. The enemy aims to stop you from moving forward, obediently pressing on in the fight. In this, they are defeated. March, pray, worship, be bold in your sincere faith, never relent. Okay, here are the verses, Exodus 7, 11 to 12. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Second Kings six, fourteen to 18. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So then, so when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Romans eight thirty seven to 39 Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Proverbs 28 1 The wicked flee when no one is pursuing but the righteous are bold as a lion. So I personally have been praying a um, barrier of holy fire surround me. I was shown one day while I was um, sitting in the sun, uh, direct sunlight in my bathroom, uh, sitting on the floor, vapors were coming off of me. I could see it like a, on the wall. I'll show you a little video of it. I was told from the Lord that the fire's already around me and that the demons can see that and they're freaked out by it. Okay, and this is like in reference to what was said. Sometimes I have people that come up to me and they just kind of stare at me really weird. And I'm like, hi, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but really their demon inside is freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, she's on fire with God's power. <laughs> so um, I pray, um, I prayed, especially during this time period when we were getting this really strong oppression, that this holy fire would just be huge, like big around me and um, that the enemy would fear it and that I would be bold through it with God's power. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about God. And then um, that this holy fire would burn up all the efforts aimed at me by the enemy. You can see in this video that there's like a vague vapor type of shadow. And I tried to enhance the video a little bit to see if it could be better seen. I mean, this was in direct sunlight. It's, I think we should be really happy we got anything on camera, honestly. but. I thought it was super interesting. I could see it a lot better with my eyes. Um, hopefully it's good enough for you guys to see in like video quality is never always the best. But 
Um, so after this ability to see these vapors, um, it was like this very behind the veil kind of experience. Then I got the following words, which I'm going to share with you from um, 521.24, and it's called the fire. I do have to skip over some of the words because some of them are for leadership or private or whatever, but the ones I can share, I'm going to share with you here. So if you get the printed version, you see the dot, 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 ellipsis, uh, that's just that I'm skipping information that's not supposed to be public, okay? So this was received at 8.25 in the morning, and I'm not always into paying attention to what time I get stuff and uh, whatever, but when I am, I usually look it up because why did I have to write that down? Because it's not a big deal to me usually. But this one was like kind of mind-blowing. So um, 8.25 in the Hebrew is a shof, conjurer, necromancy, magician, astrologer. It's only used in Daniel 1.20 and 2.2, if you want to look that up. And in the Greek... It is Italia, a city of Pamphylia, um, named by the king of Pergamum, only used in Acts 14.25. Okay? Now, watch the world change radically. Snicker at the truth that the kings will fail. They have no concept of what I am to do. They watch my prophets. They see the words, but they are trapped in their prison of unbelief and fear and they do not believe it is true they watch to guess when you go they have no idea what will occur yes you this is personal words to me so it means julie yes you see holy fire around you the veil thins you are tired but well protected my brightness on your face now at this time i had looked directly out the window and like the brightest sun in all of humanity was just <clears throat> shining on my face and it was super warm. And um, then I looked to my right and that's when I saw this holy fire around me because there's a shadow of me and then there's this holy fire like drifting and swirling up around me and I was like, whoa, what's going on? So um, then in this process as I'm noticing this and I took a little video of it, then I was told by the Lord, go to the pool. So 8.45 in the morning, I'm at the pool, and 8.45 in the Greek, another one, blowing my mind, is um, an eyewitness to see with one's own eyes, one who has seen or heard something with their own eyes or ears, okay? So here I'm at the pool. There's not a single person at the pool. When I got to the pool, I swam some laps in the pool. There was nothing in the pool. There was no person at the pool. Nobody had left anything on the side of the pool absolutely nothing it was just empty clean vacant except for me after I got out of the pool I went into the spa when I was in the spa I heard the song uh, praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three in one then I'm in the spa and again I see these vapors and I could see them coming off of me but I also saw them just coming off of the water in the hot tub and I was like okay maybe that's interesting and then in front of this were the lights or kind of coming up through it I guess I should say coming coming up through it were the lights that I've seen in my bathroom before which are angelic and it's just kind of this peachy yellowy tone that um, sometimes when angel is there this light is cast forth in a certain way and I was like kind of processing is this just an angel what's with this you know kind of vapor thing and um, my mind was kind of going back and forth, but then my eyes started doing this rainbow thing. I'm getting this new like superpower, I don't know what you want to call it, but um, when I look at certain people, I get certain things happening to my eyes so I know who's good, who's bad. And so um, I get this rainbow vision is what the best I can call it. And certain things have rainbow vision that are very holy. So um, I was, going through rainbow vision while I'm sitting here watching this and I was just kind of like you know, I don't know experiencing something and then um, when I got out of the spa mind you nobody had come back into the pool area the pool has this large steel gate and when it closes oh you can hear it it's real um, shattering so nobody came in nobody left or anything so I'm walking past the pool because there's this one little area where it's risen up you can't see 100% into the pool from the spa so as I walk past, you're never going to believe what I see. <laughs> I walk past the pool, and there's this. 
flames on a boogie board. Where did this even come from? I was just freaking out. I'm like, where did, no one's here. This wasn't here before. Where did this come from? And it was reinforcing this idea of flames, right? So I was so taken by the presence of this kickboard sitting there that I walked around, checked out the bathrooms, looked everywhere, and I'm like, just double checking. Was there a person here? No footprints that someone got in or out of the water. I was just like, whoa, this is tripping me out. So then I sat down on the chair and I heard another song and it was, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Christ the Son, we believe in the Holy Spirit, we are the church and we stand as one. And then I got directions directly from God and he said, sit fully in the sun. I was under an umbrella. So I uh, did this. I got into another seat and I was fully in the sun and I closed my eyes and then I saw the same vision of the vapors. And then I heard these words. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. Hounds are hunting, but I am defending. This is a reference to the words from 4.13.24 called Hounds Go Hunting. Each of you anointed are under pressure. You know the times are shifting. You have peace from me, for your eyes are in the word and your heart is in prayer. The simple instructions I have given for all, you, Julie, apply naturally as do all the anointed. Those not prepared are going to have difficult days. My anointed will be at peace through it all, just as you are now. Yes, you are tired, and you have had many wars on many fronts, but you shed them off and you let me carry them. You have the Holy Spirit fire, given the glimpses today, seeing its vapors. The enemy can see this. This is why those filled with the enemy stare at you with such a gaze. They are scared of that. The vapors in the spa you are seeing, and right now, you wonder if it is an angel in a new form that you are see for you to see, or if the vapor shows off their evidence, or if this is the Holy Spirit's fire. The angels are with you. Though intangible, with you daily and constantly. Then we're skipping and it says, the last minute things that will happen to prepare all of the anointed are all with purpose. Not one word lost, not one event unnecessary, not one interaction unthought of. Every single experience between now and the time you leave is for purpose. Making your service time during the missions easier. Embrace what comes before you, be flexible with it, and be my representatives. You see small pockets of awakenings. Some are more true and some are false. Now this was, the Lord knows what I was thinking, and I was thinking about how a lot of people seem to be converting to Christianity and, and there seem to be all these new miracles popping up, and I can tell some of them are fake. And um, that's what he's referring to. So I'm going to start over. You see there are small pockets of awakenings, and some are more true and some are false. Those with discernment notice the difference. Those without discernment think it is all one movement. The false ones are being pushed by the false messiah to make it appear that they are Christians. When the false messiah comes, they, the influencers, will all flock after him and those people who follow the influencers will follow man those with discernment see that the conversions are an act the influencers do not hear when i speak they have nuances that give them away for those who have eyes to see purity what does it take it takes being as close to the source as possible Pure water bubbling out from its original is most pure. As it comes out of the way, it gets impurities. As drifting away from the source, from nearby things, it comes in contact with. In order to be pure, to be close to me, in order to be pure, to be close to me, and have my words as the words from the Bible, my words from listening to me. 
This is how to be pure. All Christians are going to receive my words in their head before they are raptured. True Christians with true faith, this is the new thing. Miracles upon miracles. Christians as bright as Jesus at the transfiguration. Healings on a mass level. Conversions on a mass level. These are all signs of your times. Signs of the end. Signs of the new reign of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Rejoice. Who is like the Lord? No one. The anointed are my special treasures. They have special responsibilities. They also have more difficult lives on earth. But eternity's benefits do outweigh every cost. The days that are to pass are many before the rapture. But they are few before the translation. Those that have been associated with you, Julie, will understand that you were told you would be translated and that you were. And they will have more confidence in those who have been listening to me about what rapture is like and when it should occur because as events happen, they will lose faith and think, oh, God is not coming to rapture us because they have been told nothing negative will happen before the rapture. Nothing will happen if they listen to me. Those listening to man will have some difficult days. You have done well to share your faith and to share my words. Beyond what you can ask or imagine, that is what is next. Keep looking forward. I will give you another dream that is a foreshadowing of what is to be in heaven. It will help you mentally. It will be like the other ones that you highly appreciate. You do not have to share these words with YouTube. These are so I can refresh you. If you feel that some of these words need to be extracted and shared, I will point you to which ones, which are the ones we just did. Surrounded by the enemy, you are even more closely surrounded in angels. Nothing could harm you, no matter what happens. So next, I see these vapors in front of my eyes again and it's 11, 10 a.m. And I hear, I know you are tired of this world. I know you are tired of YouTube. Hold on a little further. It is not that far. Time passes quickly as you are working. Focus on when you come here. You will be completely fulfilled as well. All of you, anointed, finally fulfilling your life purpose, finally free from the shackles of this world. You will rejoice. Onward, not much further. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty. Praise be to the King of kings. Now here are the verses. Acts 14, 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Hebrews 13, five through six. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Second Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 2, 3 through 4, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who is enlisted him as a soldier. 2 Timothy 2, 10 through 13. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we should also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Luke three sixteen, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 4, 17 through 18. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me 
and that all the Gentiles might hear, also I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work, and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now this is related to the words I was just given um, on July 16th. Um, these are part of a larger bunch of personal words, okay? As a point of reference, the Nabahoths are going to be referenced. This is another way to say the Moabites. When we talked about Moab, that prophecy of different things that will come in and invade and things that will happen. Um, Nabahoth is the same group of people, okay? It's just a different time period and what they were called. Okay, so this was given on 6-16-24, and it's called Curses. So it picks up with, They have to unlock some demons. Under royal tombs for pagans lay royal secrets. Their sins are buried under them. To disturb the dead is to disrespect, but it has been done. This is how paganism stays alive. Nebahoths were found in an archaeological dig. The unholy brought them forth. The kings used magic to find and bring forth the darkest demons that were buried with their sins. The core of the Antichrist is from these despicable things, Nebo, Nebahoth, and the Egyptian mummies. The remains being in a museum and traded to be viewed is of historical interest and has proven the Bible. But also curses are placed on them. They wish to pass curses to innocents who see them. This is why it smells bad. That is the demons. And this is why it creeps you out. Now, let me tell you, while this was being said, I was getting flashbacks. I had been to several different museums. We're big on going and seeing stuff in museums. And um, I had been California and New York, and they both had Egyptian uh, mummy kind of things. And I walked in like as a point of interest, like, you know, I'm teaching the kids. Oh, gosh, we're studying this. Let's go take a look. But I was just like, oh, my gosh, this stuff stinks, right? And it just gave me that kind of creepy feeling. I We didn't spend too much time in there. Um, anyway, but the evil ones, so this is what he's talking about when he's saying why it creeps you out, because it does creep me out. Now, the evil ones celebrate their efforts publicly, but never in honesty, always under the guise of something that seems normal. If you see the powerfuls acting noble, this means that that thing has a hidden curse. Archaeological finds like King Tut, the green energy and save the earth movement, giving aid to foreign countries for war, the COVID shots, the digital ID and real ID. Now about war, I was told this, the war has a curse to make those who see it addicted to see it and then accept the demons that they have placed with the curse. And then I was told for my husband, notice how Jim does not care about the popular war. This is because I protected him. Okay, back to the words. All that they push, the elites, the powerfuls, okay? All that they push is cursed first. The powerfuls' powers are from the evil one. They are committed to him in their clubs, evil together. Their magic does not affect mine who listen to me. Your tasks are counted out. The important ones will be completed. This is specifically to me, the things I have left to do. Hear these words. The challenges are worth it. Keep working. You fight the enemy all day in prayer. Rare. Pain and suffering refine. At the point of time I got this, I was in a lot of pain and suffering. They bring a person to understand they cannot do it and they seek me. Pain and suffering are attacks from the enemy. They thrive on suffering. What they mean for evil, I turn to good for those who cry out to me. I bless with wisdom and with my proper faith and compassion. I use the demons aim to tear down to improve my people, refine them, 
bring them close to me. Joy, compassion, Christ-likeness, and love are the main products. These truths applied to others by those who suffer after they have suffered. Suffering creates quick maturity. Many who think they suffer are not actually suffering. Your nerve pain being like agony, Jim's ear pain being like agony, Christ on the cross, agony, suffering involves agony. Many have pain and irritations, but suffering connects to the soul. Pain is forgotten. Suffering and agony is not forgotten. Suffering can be with the loss of a loved one and physical pain in the body that is extreme or severe concern for a loved one that can cause suffering as you experienced with one of yours. Jesus in the garden with the sweat of blood was agony in prayer. This burden is very heavy. You hold a more mild burden than Christ, but the same concern. You deeply care that I am honored and that the church is functioning as the word says it agonizes you. A pressure, a constant weight. Moses, David, Elijah, Elisha, Joshua, the apostles, Paul, all had this weight. It's a heavy burden to lead. But those without this burden carry the task lightly, and this is disrespect. I knew you could handle the weight, the reason I chose you. You live in a weak generation. They lack confidence in me and boldness for me. They sway with the wind and adapt to change that disrespects me. David's Psalms have text to renew your burden. You are tired, child. Rest. We will speak soon. Now here are the verses I was given. Here are the verses I was given. Genesis 25, 12 to 13. And these were the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nabahoth, then Kedar, Abdiel, and Mizbam. James 1, 6. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Hebrews ten twenty three. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Psalm 109, 28. Let them curse, but let you bless. When they arise, let them be ashamed. Let your servant rejoice. Let my accusers be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own disgrace as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yes, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those who condemn him. Luke six twenty seven and 28. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. Luke six forty three to 45. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit, for men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Luke twenty two forty four. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Romans 8, 17. Now, if we are children, we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Psalm 118, 5 through 8. Um, I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. 
Therefore I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Psalm 66, 8 through 12. O oh, bless the Lord our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise be heard. Who keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. Okay, I think I've already released these words I'm going to read to you next, but they flow so perfectly and it kind of just brings um, a finish to this. So I was pressed to go ahead and add God's power versus magic's power to the end of this. It was given on 2-21-24. Um, what is the difference between God's power and magic? Besides the obvious that God's power is good and magic does evil. The source of power is so different. God's power is from the original of life and light. And magic's power is from death and darkness, so it can never supersede God's power. Their power is from a created one who sinned, not the origin of power itself. To bind Satan limits his power and his team's access to it even further. To pray that they are taken away to the pit requires a process in which they are entrapped and removed or destroyed and removed, disallowing any of their powers to be used again. This reduces the total amount of power available from their side. This means their team must generate more power somehow. They can gain more power by feeding on human fear, blood that is acquired in evil ways, pain, and other things that trigger negative feeling. This is why those full of faith do not fear, because they know I, their protector, supersedes the enemy's power, and their lack of fear blocks the ability of the enemy to feed off of them or draw power from their fear. The more people with full faith, the less the enemy can draw power from humans, so they must rely on only the power that Satan, Satan can generate. Him, being a created one, lacks the ability to generate much power. Their entire endgame is built on fear to fuel their magic. If you do not fear their magic, it is not effective on you. Pray for others to be fearless. Pray for others to have my discernment. It strips power from the evil ones. Nothing can strip my power from a holy one. Worship fuels it. Faith fuels it. The blood of Christ gives it the power to work in humans. I choose who are the responsible recipients of it and how much of it each will wield. Okay, here's the verses. Mark 10, 52. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus on the road. Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 1, 18 to 23. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above the rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Okay, so I hope you find this encouraging. Um, if you're going through different things, uh, this is how to fight, guys. This is, and don't stop fighting, just fight. The benefits outweigh the negatives. And yes, some days are harder than others. Just keep going. Do not relent. Tenacity. 
discipline, obedience, just keep on it. So I hope this helps you. If you've been struggling or feeling like things are weird, I hope this is uh, meeting your needs, okay? And see you next time. Thank you.